do you have a list in your head, things that you're curious about, that you've been meaning to look up later? Yeah, me too. My internet search history, full of this kind of stuff. It's really good trivia. My name's Mike Simpson. I do the news for my day job, but on my new podcast, I've Got Questions, we are going to go through that list. First mine, and then we're going to do yours. Everything from deja vu to dinosaurs, you can find it now on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go and find some answers, because I've got questions. How's your mental health? I'm listening with Dan Reynolds from Imagine Dragons. Yeah, I don't think there's an age that's too early because really, if you take away the word therapy, what's happening is, hey, let's communicate with other people. Let's communicate what you're feeling. It's just communication skills. So it's like basically you're just saying, hey, there might be some conversation you can have with X person that's going to help you. And because it helps you to evolve as a human. Explore more at imlistening.org. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the WIP Morning Show. It is a Thursday morning in the Delaware Valley, and I have some very important information to give to you at the very beginning of this radio program. It is foggy out there this morning. Snow fog. In fact, I decree that the fog is such it is too large a threat for you to attend work today. Work from home so you can listen to the next four hours of radio at WIP. Because we are, we already have a car waiting downstairs, Al. The moment our tape is finished at 10 o'clock, we are rushing it. See, we don't stream here. We are rushing it (laughs) up to the New York Museum of Radio and Television as one of the classic episodes of this radio program. Okay. Uh, Needless to say, how do you know it's going to be great today? Uh, Exhibit A, Billy King. He's Exhibit A. Good morning. Billy King. Billy King yeah. went into his extensive cell phone list of calls, mm-hmm. made one today, 9 o'clock. I'm going to kill you! Oh, no. <laughs> John Calipari. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool, huh? The coach yeah. who coached Tyrese Maxey mm-hmm. at Kentucky for only one year because yeah. Maxey went pro, yeah. ended up here. Great stuff from Calipari. I am going to ask you about John Chady, although... Things were patched up at the last stages. Oh, he loved them. They, yeah. they were, they were I fine. got a <laughs> lot of great stuff to ask John Calipari. He was an assistant here when you were the the, the uh, GM, right, Billy? Yes, he was. He, but he was really just uh, between the Nets and the Memphis? Memphis, yeah. Between the Nets and Memphis. He anyway, needed a job. He did. He needed a job for a while, but I'm going to ask him. Because Larry Brown brought him here. They're yeah. close. <laughs> Would John Calipari end his career at 81 as an assistant <laughs> coach in college? When he's won championships everywhere, would he do that? Does he love it that much? I don't think John would. Billy's telling me, Al, that Larry Brown does recruiting visits. Larry Brown, 81. (laughs) Nice. Even the grandparents are younger than him. (laughs) That's true. true. (laughs) They get through. All right, anyway, so Cal Party's out at night. At 7, we got John Marks. Al, he will cast his lot in the quarterback situation that ultimately... I will judge because mm-hmm. I am Supreme Court, Supreme Sports Justice, Angelo Cataldi. I will decree on March 1st the WIP candidate for quarterback, at which point all other day parts must follow my lead. Oh, yeah. They do? Even if they don't like my candidate, they must pretend they do f- until uh, there's some resolution of the situation. Is that just Monday through Friday? The Saturday morning. Yep. And at 8 <laughs> o'clock. We're not going to do that today, Billy. No wisecrack. Eight o'clock, Al. Jeff McClain from Mobile, Alabama. Mobile. Uh, Al, that's where they're holding the Senior Bowl yeah. week. And uh, Julian Lurie is there. Yes. yes. The son of, of the owner of the Eagles. Is this a good thing? Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Is exactly the correct answer. <laughs> and if that weren't enough, Al, in the next segment, I will pe- play a much talked about call on uh, this show yesterday. <laughs> Frankly, you guys could not have handled it better. Uh, it is Al, advice to the lovelorn. The lovelorn. Uh, Hallie called in. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she had a situation. She misdialed. Yeah. She ended up on the wrong radio station. Yeah. But I think by the end of the call out, she felt good. Her future was charted. But so today, if anyone out there has a love issue, mm-hmm. Al Morganti will be here for you. Oh. You got a problem or you need some advice? Ask Al. Ask Al. He's got an answer, but it ain't always right. Ask Al. 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 Ask Al.
always nice. Ask out. Ask out. All right, so that if anybody out there is struggling, not sure what to do, Al knows. Just ask him. Yeah. 215-592-9495. I'll even give you the contest now because Billy King will judge. It is National Optimist Day. Oh, nice. We need you to tell us something good, something positive about Philadelphia sports. Yeah. Anything. Anybody. Anything. Billy's the judge. You're playing for Tyrese Maxey replica Ooh, jersey. Nice. A uh, classic Valentine's Day gold dip rose. You're playing for a home and st- hand and stone massage. Fifty dollar gift card for Visa. Twenty five dollar gift card to Eagles Pro Shop. Five great prizes today. Beat the rush. Called out two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. All right, we got a lot of drama, Billy. The, the Sixers lost last night, and I'm going to kind of let that loss slide by. Although it was a controversial non call, Doc got upset because Billy told me it was not a foul. Yeah. No. They, yeah. they, they deserve to lose. They, they, as usual, they have a, a big win that I, uh, two days before. They're not really into the next It was day. a scheduled loss. Very, yeah. It's very common in the NBA. So, Billy, I'm going to get to the drama because we are today one week away from the trade deadline. This is when things get more intense, right, Billy? It is. This is when guys start push, pushing the pedal to the metal. All right. So, obviously, the number one trade chip that Daryl Morey – whose ass is going to get roasted in the 7 o'clock hour by me. Mm-hmm. I have had enough of this guy. All right, Al? But now I would just say Don Mori has a week to weigh his options, and his number one trade chip is Ben Simmons. So let's get an update on Ben's very fragile state of mind. Ramona Shelbourne, Al, of ESPN, was on with Adrian Wojnarowski on his podcast. Yes, yes. These are two top ESPN people. Yes. And Ramona was discovering, she was really kind of giving you an account, probably from the agent, Rich Paul, of exactly how tough it is for Ben to remain on the Sixers. He is very unhappy to be here. Listen to Ramona. I was just struck by, like, I mean, he's driving all over Philly to find a, a place to train, to find some place where he's not going to get seen by, you know, people and thrown on social media. He's organizing runs of five on five guys all over the city. And it felt so unnecessary when he could just go to the practice facility. And you just keep coming back to this feeling of like, he's so uncomfortable there. He's so uncomfortable just being in Philadelphia. Excuse me, Ramona, could you explain further how uncomfortable Ben is here? It's so toxic that he will literally drive an hour out of his way every single day, go to a public health club to lift weights, you know, at the high school gyms. At a, I know we've all talked about mental health and we've all talked about what does that mean here? Uh, the guy has been fined $19 million. That's a lot to do to avoid playing for a team. Whatever he's going through, um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever you want to say, like he's, you know, there's a, there's an honesty in a way he's going about it. Like he really is leaving a lot of money on the table. There is no honesty going about it. He is to use a professional term. Wuss. He is a wuss. Mm-hmm. Billy Kang. Uh, the way she describes him, he does not sound like that appetizing a trade chip. Well, there's always somebody that would take him <laughs> <laughs> when you have, 30 teams right. in the league. You just got to find the sucker. Yeah, you just got to find somebody that uh, that wants to try to think they can change him and provide him a great environment. Is that a fragility mentally that's even worse than we realize? That he is riding around for an hour trying to fight a gym uh, where no way, one the, will see him? By the way, the hour thing, uh, he, how much money is he making this year? Uh, he's making, well, I don't know. Uh, a lot of it, I can't he's tell you. He's supposed to make 33. He's yeah. lost a lot. Yeah, but he's still making millions. A lot of people drive to work an hour yeah. Yeah. and back. I'll be honest with you here. On Thursdays, I have a drive. Yeah. He okay, could that- use, if he needs to, I'll get him burned. Hey, how far do you, How far is your drive? My drive is an hour and a half. Yeah. Right? And Bernadette's there, and she does not talk much, which is good. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I will, uh, Al, all I'm here to do is help. I'll offer you global limousine. No, no, go no. ahead, Bernadette. Go. go pick up Ben. Hmm. Drop him off at my house. I got a few questions for him. <laughs> All right, let's get I, – I, now let's in a Woj, because Woj, he understands – he talks to all these GMs, all these yeah. agents. He knows what's going on. So he's talking now 
about how valued Ben is with a week to go before the deadline. There are a lot of teams who want him. Yep. But I don't know there's anybody who thinks we can't live without him. We have to Mm -hmm. get him. And they certainly don't value him at the level that Philly has wanted um, in -hmm. trade packages. And so you've seen, you know, we reported last week, Sacramento said we're out. Brooklyn has made it clear, don't call us about James Harden. We're not doing a deal at the trade deadline with you. And the rest of the teams, there are a lot of GMs too who will tell you, I had one tell me today, who have certainly a team that has the pieces to do Mm -hmm. a Ben Simmons trade. I'm waiting. Daryl's got to call me. I'm not calling him. (laughs) Good luck. Daryl seems to be a pacifist when it comes to doing his job. Uh, all right, so now I, I I just got this one other thing, Billy, I want to play. Then I'm going to get your take on what the market is right now and where you think what might happen. Uh, but you, what you're about to hear, Adrian Wojnarowski is probably the best reporter covered the M- NBA for ESPN. He's phenomenal. Yeah. He does not know the city of Philadelphia. And he made a comment so stupid that I must play it to you only so that you understand that not everything he says is good. <laughs> all right, Al? He is still arguing that there is a slight possibility Ben could end up back here and that the city would have an unusual response to his return. Given the way this team's playing and how badly they wanted to win in Philly, if Ben Simmons shows up, I think that city, all he needs is for Joel, Doc Rivers, Tobias Harris to say, come on, guys, we need you to support him. We can win it. We can do this. He's coming back to play. I bet you the opening night there, he'd get a standing ovation. Uh, Woj. Uh, hold on. I want Woj. to see those odds. On yeah. Woj, yeah, uh, Woj uh, you no. could not possibly be more wrong. Yeah. Oh my God. Right, here is, and again, now this is just that interpretation. This did not happen yet. But if he did come out, uh, this would be the crowd reaction. Please, Woj, just stick to the reporting. You don't yeah. know this city. No. Billy, uh, let me start with Harden. He had four points last night. Yeah. Was awful. Minus 21. One week to go. That's the guy Maury wants the most. Is it? Is it there? Is it possible now? I, one week. I don't think there. No. There. I don't, you I don't. think Harden is not obtainable before the end of the season? I think Brooklyn's going to ride it out and okay. see what they could do. Not unless he came in and, and really said, demanded, you know, All I'm right. not resigning. Washington did here last night. There's a guy you love out there, Russ, yeah. that did not play. They didn't even need him. They beat the Sixers yeah. anyway. Bradley Beal. Do you see that? He's going to be a free agent at the yeah. end of the year. Do you see that as a possibility? I think there's a slight chance. Slight chance. All right, if you had to say now, one week from the deadline, Billy, will there be a significant move by the immovable Daryl Morey? I think there's a 30% chance. Ooh, 30%. Yeah. And before I thought I'll see what kind of odds we can get on that. Yeah, Al I, does a lot of that. Before, I didn't think that I thought 30%. That there was no way. And what I'm hearing now, there, there's a chance. 30% Ben goes? Yeah. Oh, be- now you'll hear a cheer. Yeah. You mean this three out of ten shot Ben Simmons will not have to seek gyms out an hour from home. <laughs> so so you're no telling one can me see there's him. a chance. Yeah. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> Billy King. And that's the tip of his iceberg. He showed me a picture of him in Indy. Yeah. 1995, Billy, something like that. Has he changed one bit? No, it looks Look at him. Oh, my Look, God. You made you made a pact with the devil. Look at him. He looks the same. That's what happens when you lose your hair at 15. Is that what it is? <laughs> God bless him. And I'll tell you, even back then, Al, where you had no money, still dressed no beautiful. Money. <laughs> you you no money. No money. Oh, that's right. Oh, they pay you at Duke? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, I look, Al, wish we had telecasted. <laughs> looks like they might have. Scott's out of life for Barrington. Hi, Scotty. Brother Angela, morning crew. Brother King, what's good with you? Good morning. All right, Scott, if you uh, go to that first game, Ben comes back. Uh, Woe just said you're going to give him a standing ovation. Is that accurate? Yeah, I got a long shot of becoming a Philadelphia Eagle, too. <laughs> nah, nah, heck no. For, for, for Brother Angela, my, my breaking point with him was 
when he used that mental yeah. aspect. You, yep. you, you don't do that. Honestly, that was that was my breaking point. Yeah. That was my breaking point. I said, I can't win him. You can use any others, but don't don't use a a, a, a disease like that. So, no, but um, it's no. kind of evolved over time. Al Morgani now will tell you that the mental block is simply Philadelphia. Like, if any other team obtained it, the block would be removed instantly and he would be mentally healthy. Yeah, that makes well, sense. Well, that doesn't make sense it makes, to me. It makes perfect sense. It's the only reason he doesn't want to We're play. a mental block? Do I look like a mental block to you? It's not. It's, it's, it's uh, the be general, nice, brother Al. Be nice. A <laughs> mental case, it's, maybe, not a mental block. It's Embiid and the general manager. Yeah. He wow. doesn't want to play for him. And, and the coach. Tuna. No, the coach. And the coach. And the coach yeah. Oh, the coach said that horrible thing about him. Well, oh. Definitely Embiid, because yeah. that was in the Embiid. story, too. He's he's mad at, he's upset with Embiid. Yeah. What a wuss. You know what? I, I, all, it all comes down to this was his team and Joel's team. When Doc came here, it became get the ball to Joel, and the focal point became oh. Joel. Jealousy. And I think that's where Ben felt like, okay, now it's Joel's team. It's not our team. So anymore. maybe Simmons should go to New Hampshire and hang out with the Brett Brown. Yeah. Brown maybe has some chores around the house he could do, and he won't get yelled at. It's just a thought. <laughs> All right. hey, Scott, uh, yes, sir. are you an optimist by nature? We, of course, say it's 50-50. All right, Scott, I got really good stuff today. I need you to tell me something really good about Philadelphia sports right now. Something good about Philadelphia sports? Um, we're, we're passion for it. Passion. Passion not will not win. Yeah. Thank you very much. Billy King is your judge today. It's not it's, people are gonna need a minute to transition out because a lot of what we do is to ta- people bitch. <laughs> uh but this is National Optimist Day. Huh. And you can bitch during your call, but at the end for the contest gotta be something give me good. something yeah. very good that's happening in the town. Yeah. Yeah, in sports. Uh, somebody, some person, something happening, you're thrilled. This is good, that's great. There must be something. I know Kenny from the Dirty Third. I know what he'd say, but I won't give it away. No, don't give him that. That's right. That's a good example. But uh, John Johnson would come up empty. 215-592-949. We come back. Hallie calls the wrong station and seeks love advice. It all happened at 839 with Joe DeCamera hosting yesterday and all these other great people. And you will hear how it played out. It is the talk of Philadelphia. Hallie gets advice on how to live her life Hmm. by accident. (laughs) WIP Sports Type 660. Whether you're a seasoned investor like me or new to the game, it's time to sit down, roll up your sleeves, and find out new ways of making money. Subscribe to WBBM's new podcast, Gains with Andy Gersher, where I talk to experts from all over the country to get fresh perspectives on meme stocks, cryptocurrencies, AI, and so much more. Subscribe to Gains with Andy Gersher on the Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.